I am Sambit Majumdar. Our topic is piezo detection mechanism to investigate viral infection. Today, I will mainly focus on the piezo detection mechanism to investigate dengue infection. Before going to my today's topic, let's first discuss about the biosensor. What is biosensor? A biosensor is an analytical device which converts a biological response into an electrical signal. The basic characteristics of biosensor are sensitivity, simplicity, reliability, response time, accuracy, and stability. The basic components of biosensor are biological sensing elements, transducer, signal conditioner, data processor, and signal generator. Let's talk on what is piezoelectric biosensor. A piezoelectric biosensor is generally based on the piezoelectric effect. They generally use gold to detect a specific angle at which E waves are emitted when the substance is exposed to laser light like quartz which vibrates under the influence of an electric field. They have used in the sectors like healthcare, aerospace, consumer electronics and nuclear instrumentation. Basic principle of piezoelectric biosensor. Piezoelectric biosensors are a group of analytical devices working on a principle of affinity interaction recording. A piezoelectric platform is a sensor part working on the principle of oscillation change due to a mass bound on the piezoelectric crystal surface. Now, let's start with the piezo detection mechanism to investigate the dengue infection. So, what is dengue? A dengue is an acute infectious disease caused by a flabby virus transmitted by Aedes mosquitoes. Half of the world's population about 4 billion people live in the area where risk of dengue is more. This type of mosquito generally lay eggs near standing water in a containers like pots, buckets, etc. Symptoms of dengue The most common symptom of dengue is fever. With any one of the following symptoms like vomiting, nausea, rash, pain in muscle, joint, typically behind the eyes. Severe dengue symptoms are tenderness, belly pain, vomiting three times in 24 hours, bleeding from nose or gums, vomiting blood, feeling tired, restless, or irritable. Now, let's discuss how dengue infection can be detected using a piezoelectric biosensor. Piezoelectric biosensor used an immunochip for the detection of DEN5 and NS1 and envelope protein. Immunochip was developed on QCM and two different monoclonal antibodies for the detection of NS1 and DEN5 envelope protein which were immobilized 
on separate immunochip. Piezoelectric is a mass sensitive detector. The transducer used is quartz and the bioreceptor uh, is coated with piezoelectric material. Frequency is controlled by an external potential which produces an oscillating electric field. Piezoelectric biosensor used an immunochip for the detection of DEN5 NS1 envelope protein. Immunochip was developed on QCM and uh, two different monoclonal antibodies for the detection of NS1 and DEN5 envelope protein were in, immobilized on the two separate immunochip. It was found that the sensitivity of this immunochip assay was 100 fold higher than the traditional sandwich ELISA method while the assay time was about 1 hour. Cocktail immunochip could also detect NS1 antigen and uh, DEN5. This figure is the, shows that the basic concept of virus detection using an piezoelectric material. This graph is taken from one of the articles in which they have used cocktail immunochip for the detection of dengue infection. Another way is also available to detect DEN5 envelope protein and NS1 glycoprotein using a piezoelectric biosensor. In this serum sample uh, were used for early diagnosis. To increase the assay sensitivity, various serum pretreatment methods were investigated and compared. After comparing, they found that Cibacron Blue 3GA gel heat denatured method was the most efficient pretreatment technique. A thin molecularly imprinted polymer specific for non structural protein 1 formed by the polymerization of monomers. In this, immunochip was able to detect all four DEN5 serotypes during the acute phase of dengue infection. For this technique, artificial receptors were used. Hello everyone. So today we are going to talk about piezoelectric biosensor detection of COVID-19. As we all know, coronaviruses are a group of related RNA viruses that causes diseases in mammals and birds. In humans and birds, they cause respiratory tract infections that can range from mild to lethal. Mild illnesses in humans include some cases of common cold, while more lethal varieties can cause SARS, MERS, and COVID-19. As we all know, coronaviruses constitute the subfamily of orthocoronavirina. They are a group of envelope viruses with a positive sense single-stranded RNA genome and a nuclear aspect of helical symmetry. The genome sizes of coronaviruses range from approximately 26 to 32 kilobases, one of the largest among the RNA viruses. They have a characteristic club-shaped spike that project from the surface, which in electron micrographs create an image of reminiscence of solar corona, from which its name is derived. In it, most patients experience fever with or without chills, chest tightness, dry cough, and shortness of breath. Identifying and monitoring SARS-CoV-2 infection has become crucially important. A recent projection of transmission dynamics of SARS-CoV-2 shows that the longitudinal serological studies are desperately needed to determine the extent and duration of immunity to SARS-CoV-2, even in the event of an apparent elimination. Maintenance of SARS-CoV-2 surveillance is still needed because of a possible resurgence of contagion. So now let's see how a piezoelectric biosensor detect the COVID-19. A piezoelectric based sensor produces a voltage when under a mechanical stress. An anisotropic crystal is used for the detection of oscillations. Because of its unique properties, the sensor is activated by an alternating voltage at the electrode, 
which propagate to the surface. The analyte is deposited on the crystal and frequency shift is measured. When molecules interact, mass increases due to interactions between the molecule and frequency controlled by the AC voltage decreases. Mass response type piezoelectric sensors are standard for virus detection. This sensor can use both antigen and antibody biomarkers for detection. Look at the right hand side picture. It shows the basic concept of virus detection using piezoelectric material. Probe antibodies are placed on the upper electrode surface. Upper and lower electrode drive the resonation of piezoelectric material. The target of antigen then binds to the probe antibody. The mass change on the electrode surface creates a frequency shift to the material in the oscillation circuit, which can be measured. The major drawback of this detection method is its limitation on the size and it typically works for high molecular weight analytes since it reduces the oscillation frequency. Various types of anisotropic materials help in sensing, for example, aluminum nitride, zinc oxide, barium titanate, etc. The first piezoelectric immunosensor was able to detect the coronavirus in sputum. Piezoelectric detection is based on the principle that frequency variations of the piezoelectric quartz crystal PQC correspond to mass changes. As a result of an affinity interaction event, such as antibody antigen interaction or DNA hybridization. In a general way, a piezoelectric biosensor can be constructed by immobilizing a receptor onto the surface of a PQC and monitoring the frequency changes due to the binding of a specific ligand. The increased mass associated with the biorecognition reaction results in a decrease of the oscillating frequency. Look at the picture. The first picture shows the schematics diagram of a biointerfacial interaction spike glycoprotein with engineered surface alone or coupled with an antibody. The second shows the frequency to time during SARS-CoV-2 detection using quad crystal microbalance. And the third graph shows the frequency to time during SARS-CoV-2 detection using magnetostrictive micro cantilever. Although initially in the 1990s, some researchers have evaluated that the detection limit of the piezoelectric method is inferior compared to the electro chemical and optical detector. More recently, the large number of articles appeared in literature clearly demonstrated that piezoelectric immunosensors are one of the most sensitive analytical instruments developed today, especially for detection of a wide range of viruses being capable of detecting antigen in the picogram range. Moreover, this type of device has the potential to detect the antigen in the gas phase as well as in the liquid phase without the need of a level. The first piezoelectric immunosensor reported in literature for coronavirus detection was published by Zuo and others regarding an immunosensor for SARS-CoV-2 detection in sputum. The horse polyclonal antibody against SARS-CoV-2 were immobilized onto a PQC surface. The detection of the antigen was achieved by spraying it in the form of an aerosol via ultrasonic oscillation. In particular, the antigen powder was dissolved into the sputum of a healthy person and successively the solution was sprayed into the aerosol. The frequency shift obtained was proportional to the antigen concentration in the range of 0.6 to 4 microgram per milliliter. The biosensor showed very good reproductibility and stability as it can be utilized 100 times without a significant lack of activity. Remaining stable for more than two months, it stored at four to six degrees Celsius. The right side, it shows a micro cantilever beam in piezoelectric biosensor. The first picture shows the fabrication process of a piezoelectric cantilever. Then the bottom left side shows the top view of the cantilever and at last the cantilever coated with mass loading zinc oxide layer. A second piezoelectric immunosensor based on micro cantilever technology was realized by Felanki and G for feline coronavirus detection. Feline coronavirus is prevalent in the cat population causing a deadly disease called the feline infection peritonitis. The feline infectious protein type 1 virus antigen was used as a biomarker. The silicon micro cantilever surface was coated with a thick silicon dioxide layer and then modified by immobilization of FIP virus type 1 polyclonal antibody. 
the deflection amplitudes of the micro cantilever resulted in proportion to the FIP1 antigen injected into the fluid cell. The proposed biosensor allowed to detect the FIP1 with a detection limit of 0.1 microgram per milliliter. By measuring the prognostic biomarkers and combining this knowledge with clinical observations as risk factors, patients can be stratified according to the disease severity. So Russell and others proposed the ideal features of the biosensors that can be regarded as a key player in the precision medicine for COVID-19. On the other hand, research and development of the biosensors that can detect at an early stage with high sensitivity and low cost have been conducted. However, none of these are commercially available on the market and cannot be used for pandemic diseases such as COVID-19. Therein lies the emphasis is on piezoelectric materials since their coupled electromechanical properties make them well suited for use as sensors and actuators in small structures and devices. In the past two decades, a wide range of piezoelectric ceramics and composites have been studied by the Tohoku University. Piezoelectric materials have also been very important biomaterials that can be interfaced with biological tissues and used in miniaturized bioelectronic and biomechanical devices. Meanwhile, magnetostrictive materials can convert magnetic energy into mechanical energy or the reverse and are used to build sensors and actuators. A new type of active magnetostrictive material has also been introduced as a biological sensor platform in the recent years. So, lastly, let's talk about the biomaterials for this still experimental biosensor. Piezoelectric ceramics, polymers, and magnetostrictive alloys are examples of functional materials, which are promising energy harvesting materials. Functional composite materials and energy harvesting technologies play an important role in building the Internet of Things society. However, further research progress is required. Although the piezoelectric and magnetostrictive sensors can detect the virus from frequency changes, these sensors have a potential to detect directly using the output voltage. In addition, they are expected to be combined with piezoelectric and magnetostrictive energy harvesting device for the Internet of Things, with the possibility to identify viruses by monitoring mechanical vibrations. They can also be attached or embedded in smart clothing. A new assay device for identifying both SARS-CoV-2 and other winter viruses, including influenza A, has also been developed. It was reported that it could successfully analyze DNA and detect SARS-CoV-2 within 90 minutes in non-clinical setting without the need for supervision by a trained healthcare professional. Currently, the development of efficient and reliable piezoelectric and magnetostrictive based biosensors that detect SARS-CoV-2 is still desired. So that was all for the piezoelectric biosensors, which is still in the developmental stage. I have been Hindal, and let's move ahead with the other biosensors. I am Abhiksha Chakravarti and I will be continuing speaking on the topic CISO detection of viral infection and my presentation is based on two kinds of viruses. One is the human papilloma virus and another is the influenza A virus. HPV stands for human papilloma virus. It is a very common type of virus. There are about 100 types of HPV that affect different parts of the body. About 30 part types of HPV can affect the genitals including the vulva vagina, cervix, and scrotum as well as the rectum and anus. Of those about 14 types are considered high risk for leading to cervical cancer. To identify the HPV in recurrent and original pathological biopsy samples, a scientist used 80 cut 10 MHz piezoelectric quartz crystal and fabricated piezoelectric geni uh, sensors, a method for the rapid detection of HPV using piezoelectric sensors was developed and the detection effectiveness was compared with those of the conventional PCR dot blot hybridization. 
the researchers assumed that the results obtained from the piezoelectric genus sensors and the PCR dot plot were almost identical. Another scientist combined DNA piezoelectric sensors with PCR to create the level-free DNA piezoelectric bar sensors for detecting the HPV from the human cervical scrapping specimens. They optimized the piezoelectric sensors with the synthetic oligonucleotides and performed the tests on cervical scrapping samples after the PCR amplification. Reproductibility was expressed as the average coefficient of variation for three samples and a group reproductibility of the approximately 10 percentage was obtained. Another scientist is designed an adjustable stainless steel metal clamping piezoelectric sensor. They detected the hybridization of HPV PCR products and discussed the effect of temperature change on the frequency baseline stability. Their results showed that the change in the frequency amplitude can reach Delta F equals to 55 plus minus 7.4 Hz when the target product of 40 mL in an ice bath was added to 110 mL of the buffer. Another scientist combined the loop mediated isothermal amplification technique with the QCM for the real time detection of high risk of HPV DNA type 58 most commonly found in the Asian woman. 80 cut 9 megahertz piezoelectric quartz crystals with the polished AU electrode coatings on both sides were used. The effect on the changes in temperature and viscosity on the QCM sensors during the PCR process was addressed and the sensitivity was further increased. The system could detect the HPV 58 at 100 copies with delta F equals to 34 plus minus 3.6 Hz. However, the analyte in this method was in contact with the reusable sensor surface which could not lead to the risk of carryover contamination. It has also been reported that a diagnostic specificity is low. Because of the disagreement of the results of the HPV 58 positive by the LMP QCM but negative by the conventional LAMP technique. So further research and development was required. Influenza virus causes influenza in birds and some mammals and is the only species of the genus Alpha influenza virus of the virus family. Influenza A virus have been isolated from the wild birds, although disease is uncommon. Some isolates of influenza A virus cause severe disease both in domestic, poultry, and rarely in humans. Occasionally, these viruses are transmitted from wild aquatic birds to domestic poultry and this may cause an outbreak or give rise to human influenza pandemics. Seizoelectric bar sensors can be used for the detection of influenza virus. Since current methods for the diagnosis of influenza require specialized laboratory facilities and highly trained personnel and in the case of viral culture can take up to 14 days to obtain a definitive result, a QCMP bar based sensor has been developed for the rapid detection of both influenza A and B virus in the laboratory culture preparation and chemical sample. A scientist have designed and fabricated wave SAW sensors with silicon oxide coated lithium neobin piezoelectric wafers for the detection of influenza A viral antigen. A detection limit was made as low as 1 
nanogram per ml which was been obtained for influenza A H1N1 AJ antigen at room temperature. Another scientist described level 3 rapid detection of influenza A virus using coating, using silver coated lead zirconate, titanate, cesoelectric discs of 100 micrometer thickness. The discs modified with synthetic CLI glycopolymers based on a polymer matrix which biospecifically bind the hemagglutinin proteins on the influenza virus which was inserted in a virus suspension. The level 3 detection of virus was achieved by monitoring the shift in disc radial mode resonance frequency. The level 3 detection of influenza virus was done at a concentration below 10 to the power 5 virons per ml which was demonstrated. It was also shown that the frequency shift is proportional to the surface stress induced by the virus absorption. Furthermore, the sensitivity was found to be inverse proportional to the thickness of the resonator. Hence, by using a thinner PZT substrate, the sensitivity can easily be increased several fold. It is expected that, P, that this PZT disc sensor method for influenza virus detection can be extended to home application as well. Now, in this slide, we can also say that in recent years, the aptamers have been investigated which can be used as an alternative method for the sensing elements. These major aptamers have been developed for this influenza A virus detection and has focused on the inhibition of the hemagglutinin protein preventing the viral infection. Hello. My name is Shojit Kumar Shah. Here, I would like to tell about a novel idea of QCM in the QCM, that is quartz crystal microbalance, in the detection of cholera. Cholera is caused by cholera toxin. It is a protein enterotoxin produced by vivro cholera. It is a common heterohexameric structure consists of single enzymatically active A subunit CTA27. This is the CTA part of cholera toxin and has a non-covalently linked pentametric code of five identical receptors binding subunits as CTAB. Here it is the cholera toxin where the CTA and CTA and CTAB is shown. The CTA diagram is here divided where the heterohexameric structure is shown for the CTA and the pentameric core is shown for CTB, CTB. The biological action of cholera toxin is initiated by the binding of CTB to the ganglioside GM1 receptor on the intestinal cell membrane. That, that means that CTB part of the cholera toxin directly reacts with the gang, ganglioside GM1 receptor that is present in intestinal cell membrane, followed by the internization of CTA into the cell where it activates endolite cyclase. The QCM that is quartz crystal microbalance technique which offers some advantages including high sensitivity and real time output, cost effectiveness and experimental simplicity has gained the advantage for detection of cholera. The quartz crystal microbalance or known as QCM is a recognized sensitive technique resulting in mass variation per unit area 
by measuring changes in resonant frequency of quartz crystal. The quartz crystal microbalance can be used under vacuum for monitoring the ray of deposition in thin film deposition system or in liquid environments where it is highly effective at determining the affinity of molecules. The technique used to measure larger entities such as viruses or polymers and biological assemblies with sensor surface in air liquid level free in real time based change in resonance frequency of a quartz crystal sensor when it is covered in thin liquid or film. This diagram here shows the principle of the QCM that is quartz crystal microbe. In simple terms, the affinity reaction probe target DNA DNA which gets contact with sensor surface. That's why the mass increases. When the mass increases, the oscillation frequency decreases, which can be shown in graphical diagrams. So the, this Nobel piezoelectric method on ganglioside GM1, which reacts with CTB of cholera toxin can be used as a new idea for detection of cholera toxin. The biosensing surface should be prepared with ease via spontaneous state of ganglioside GM1 incorporated phospholipid vehicles on octa decathlon coated gold surface. The use of GM1 as recognized receptors in biosensors have many advantages over antibodies ganglioside GM1 molecules and are very small in comparison to antibodies and therefore a high surface concent concentration of receptors is possible. This will increase the interaction with the analyte giving lower detection limit and also ganglioside molecules are generally more stable than antibodies giving an increased usable lifetime of the biosensor surface. Here this diagram shows where the gold electrode is connected with piezoelectric surface and then coated with G coated with GM1 ganglioside molecules that is act as receptors. And here this is the cholera toxin virus where the CTB area of the cholera toxin interacts with GM1 ganglioside and thus forming this structure. Next, the specific interaction multivalent of CT by ganglioside GM1 molecule enables the biosensors to be implemented via sandwich format using C CT antibody. And then the HRPG anti RLG bound to the CNT antibodies was as used as biocatalyst for oxidative precipitation of 4 cholero 1 naphthol by H2O2 to yield the insoluble product benzo 4 cholera hexadrone on the QCM surface, resulting in an obvious frequency change that corresponds to the level of CT analyte. The proposed approach was successfully applied to determination of CT in buffer or sample solution, implementing that this technique would hold com comparable potential in the development of sensitive sample biosensors for clinical and public health areas. Here is the real-time process of sensing surface on the determination CT means cholera toxin as monitoring using microgrammetric QCM analysis. With the increase of time when the analyte where the CT toxin interacts with GM1 galaxocyte, the frequency decreases which results in this graph shown here. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Jagadit Sardar and I will be explaining about the detection of hepatitis B virus by piezoelectric biosensors. In this slide, I am going to explain about hepatitis B disease. So, what hepatitis B disease is a serious liver infection caused by the hepatitis B virus. For some people, hepatitis B becomes chronic 
meaning it lasts more than six months, having chronic hepatitis B increases the risk of liver failure, liver cancer or cirrhosis, a condition that permanently scars of the liver. Most adults with hepatitis B recover fully even if their signs and symptoms are severe. Infants and children are more likely to develop a chronic hepatitis B infection. A vaccine can prevent hepatitis B, but there's no cure if you have the condition. If someone is infected, taking certain precautions can help prevent the spread of the virus. Now some common ways by which hepatitis B virus can spread are sexual contact. You may get hepatitis B if you have unprotected sex with someone who is infected. The virus can pass to you if the person's saliva, sal uh, semen or vaginal secretions enter your body. Sharing of needles. Hepatitis B virus easily spreads through the needles and syringes contaminated with infected blood. Sharing four drug paraphernalia puts someone at high risk of hepatitis B. Accidental needle sticks. Hepatitis B is a concern for healthcare workers and anyone else who comes in contact with human blood. It can also get transmitted from mother to child during childbirth. In this slide, I am going to be telling about the symptoms of hepatitis B virus or if you are infected with hepatitis B virus. So signs and symptoms of hepatitis B range from mild to severe. They usually appear about one to four weeks after someone is been infected, although someone can get or see them as early as two weeks post infection. Some people, usually young children, may not have any symptoms. So the symptoms may include abdominal pain, dark urine, fever, joint pain, loss of appetite, nausea and vomiting, weakness and fatigue, yellowing of your skin and whites in the eyes. This slide is all about the detection of hepatitis B by piezoelectric biosensors. So a highly sensitive piezoelectric hepatitis B virus DNA biosensor has been developed based on the sensitive mass transduction function of the quartz crystal microbalance and the speciality of nucleic acid hybridization reaction and an hepatitis B virus nucleic acid probe was immobilized into the gold electrodes of A9MHZ at cut piezoelectric quartz crystal by the polyethylamine uh, addition glutal aldehyde cross-linking or physical adsorption method. In this slide, I am going to be explaining more about the piezoelectric biosensors of how this works for the detection of hepatitis B virus. So piezoelectric biosensors which is used for hepatitis B virus detection are mass sensitive and their resonant frequencies are directly dependent on the mass of the sensing layer as well as the captured external biomolecule. Therefore, they have been developed for label free monitoring of affinity interactions between molecules with real time output, high sensitivity, and good specificity between molecules. Hepatitis B virus nucleic acid probe was immobilized onto the gold electrode of a 9 MHZ at A cut piezoelectric quartz crystal with the polyethylamine addition, glute aldehyde cross linking which is also called as peg glue method or the physical adsorption method. The coated crystal with the peg glue method to immobilized hepatitis B virus nucleic acid probe showed the better results than the physical adsorption method with respect to sensitivity, reproductibility and stability. The frequency shifts of hybridization have better linear relationship with the amount of hepatitis B DNA when the amount was in range of 0.02 to 0.14 micro, microgram per ml, the crystal could be generated nearly five times without perceptible decrease of sensitivity. Most of the reported piezoelectric biosensors utilize quartz crystal disks and the transducers and target DNA is normally the target analyte. However, these devices are subject to time-consuming procedures and inability for multi-detection due to the physical nature of the quartz crystal. 
quartz crystal microbalance that is QCM is based on the property of an AT cut quartz crystal that oscillates when an altering voltage is applied. The quartz surface always has a thin gold metal layer deposited onto it which doubles as a conductor for the AC current flowing and also provides an attachment surface for a bioreceptor to be immobilized. This deposition can be monitored by the frequency decrease caused by the additional mass on the metal layer that is related to the mass change via the Sauerberry equation. Last of all the conclusion, so recently increasing attention has been paid to the development of QCM biosensors because of many of their merits such as compact size, high sensitivity, good specificity, low cost level free detection and rapid responses. Moreover, advances in biosensors make multiple analyte diagnosis possible which may eliminate expensive and time-consuming detection procedures in clinical diagnosis. A high-sensitive piezoelectric DNA biosensors has been developed based on the sensitive mass-transducing function of the QCM and the specificity of the nucleic acid hybridization reaction. An HBV nucleic acid probe was immobilized into the gold electrodes of a 9 mhz 8-cut piezoelectric quartz crystal by the polyeth polyethylamine addition, glutaldehyde cross-linking or physical adsorption method. The frequency shifts of hybridization have a better li a linear relationship with the amount of HBV DNA when the amount is 0.02 to 0.14 mg per ml. So this is all about the detection of the hepatitis B virus by the piezoelectric biosensors. Thank you. This is Swati Parna. I am going to speak about piezoelectric biosensor for HIV detection. The piezoelectric biosensors are considered an attractive strategy for the purpose of diagnostic applications. It has been reported that a monoclonal antibody which is peptide specific and a synthetic one, approximately 24 oligopeptides based model system has been utilized for the optimization of the immobilization method. The immunosensor run through this model system and the HIV specific antibodies in the human blood serum has been detected by a transmembrane protein recombinant fragment of HIV. In this regard, it is important to mention that by employing this antigen for the ELISA tests, almost 100% specificity has been exhibited and commercialization of this method in HIV screening tests via biotest tag is done. In this method, the gold electrodes are present on the surface of the transducer and definite immunological receptor layer is simply immobilized. Notably, the absorption ability of the protein molecules on the surface of the gold is irreversible and strong because of the interactions between hydrophobic and thiol gold. Let's talk about the method. Briefly, the method involves the removal of the adsorbed components by rinsing of gold electrodes with acetone as these adsorbed particles disturb the adsorption of the receptor molecules. This is followed by the incubation of the clean surface with antigen containing solution at room temperature for 12 hours and incubation of the recombinant GP41 and synthetic P24 peptides was performed subsequently. After this step, saturation through bovine serum albumin of non-specific binding sites with non-specific protein with an incubation time of one hour at room temperature on the surface of in transducer was done. Finally, the crystal surface was rinsed again and the sensor was applied for the serology measurements. Let's talk about the measurement procedure. The whole measurement procedure is elaborated in the given figure. Flow through system with an integrated quartz crystal microbalance immunosensor. During the measurement procedure, the coated quartz crystals were mounted in the flow through system and rinsing was done with carrier buffer continuously until stabilization happens through resonance frequency during flow conditions. 
On the basis of this person peak of sample, two measurements with the difference of 12 minutes were taken. In all experiments, sample volume was 100 to 1 approximately. Various dilutions of specific and non-specific antibodies were injected in the P24 peptide antigen as shown in human sera antibody status can be determined by injecting specific dilutions of positive and negative sera in flow system. If the negative serum of equivalent concentration is mixed with carrier buffer, this will suppress non-specific binding in experiments of serum. On the topic, CISO mechanism of detection of the viral infection have demonstrated the potential and benefits of CISO materials in detecting specific viruses. New future work should further improve the accuracy and efficiency, reduce the tested size and weight, and enhance the variability of virus sensors through the bespoke design and fabrication of multifunctional piezoelectric materials. For example, the lamination of piezoelectric layers or dispersions of the nanoparticles might be one area of interest. To achieve a design optimized for sensor performance and benefits, parametric studies need to be conducted through theoretical in investigations including multiphysics and multiscale numerical simulation. Improving the modeling accuracy to remarkably increase the efficiency of the structural optimization of computational interaction between the mechanical and electromagnetic fields thereby reducing the time and cost of manufacturing and tuning in experiments. At the same time, such enhancement would also help to determine the microscale, nanoscale mechanisms impacting both mechanical and electromagnetic behavior of the functional piezoelectric materials. So this is the end of our presentation. Thank you.